Hi, everybody. So glad you're with us. Joe Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas, and we welcome you to the Thomas and Mack Center just off the Vegas Strip for tonight's main event. Ten rounds of heavyweight action between George Foreman and Lennox Lewis. George Foreman's ring walks have become the stuff of legend, and you can see the intensity on his face. Lewis is making that final walk that separates man and warrior, soon to be in battle there in the ring. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, Big Jones Foreman. All right, gentlemen, protect yourself at all times. Let's touch them up. Well, they're scheduled to spend a half an hour swapping weather. This is 10 round. Big George Foreman against Lennox Lewis. Boy, if he can deliver that power to the chin of Lennox Lewis, George Foreman may have himself a special night here. Oh, he will. And guess what? Lewis won't. <laughs> because he'll be seeing stars and hearing all kinds of birds. And that's the thing. Foreman has the better chin here. And he can punch with both sides, on both sides, right hand and left hook. For George, he has to look out for that right hand. The danger comes from that with Lennox Lewis. Very clean offense from defense by Lewis. Comes right back at him with a left hand. Blocks away that headshot. Ninety seconds to go here in this round. Able to dismiss that body shot. Teddy, we hear a lot of people talking about where are the next great fighters coming from? In your eyes, I mean, you're around gyms all over the country, all over the world. Where are they coming from? Well, Joe, I'll tell you where they're not coming from. They're not coming from football anymore. In the old days, the big guys, instead of going on the football field, somebody would look to make them into the next heavyweight champ. But now they're going to college, they're going to places where they find it a little bit of an easier travel. And we're losing a lot of those athletes. What a great job. He gave one right back in return. Nice work by Lewis. Use the ring. Use the ring. Move your head. Targeted counter punch by Lewis. End of the round here. And as I glance around ringside and look at the judges, I'm wondering what they're writing down because that was a tough round to score. Yeah, it was. And, you know, it's the kind of round where one guy would be really smart to take a page out of the book of Sugar Ray Leonard, Marvin Hagler, where Leonard stole rounds at the end, where he just clipped off 30 seconds, and that's exactly what the judges remembered. Don't punch him. Don't walk into him without throwing a punch. Throw the body. Then to the head, then finish to the body. Here we go. Round two is.
is underway. He took a shot, but he gives one of his own. A left hand scores. A little defense turns to offense by Lewis. Good looking counter punch. He tried to nab him up top, but was unable to connect. There are different kinds of power punchers, Teddy. Some are sharp and accurate, some are thudding and impactful. Where does George Foreman lie on that scale? A bludgeoning type puncher, a guy that you have a headache for about a week. He hits you with such stunning punches that it starts to just break it down as time goes on. But either way, he intimidates you with the force of the punch, with the effect of the punch, and the knowledge that he's in front of you with that ability. a big uppercut right there. He had no idea it was coming his way. He does not look good at all. Punches here. George Foreman blocks that punch. Boy, what guts. What guts to stay in there and gather yourself again after he was taking a beating. Yeah, what guts, what instincts, and what a set of whiskers. Punch. What a great job. He gave one right back in return. Nice work by Lennox Lewis. Final 10 seconds of round number two. As we come to the end of the round, Joe and Teddy with you ringside. Teddy, that's one of those rounds where I wonder what were the judges looking for because it's tough to kind of draw a line between those two fighters. Yeah, very close, but one of those rounds where you could steal it. You did a little bit more in those last 30, 20 seconds. Maybe that's the impression the judges are left with. Keep your hands up, all right? You have to keep your hands up. Keep your hands moving. Keep busy. So here we are, a new round underway, and in that last round, he got tagged. He got hit pretty hard, Teddy. Yeah, he did. He got caught. Now, the first thing is, we all know he got caught, but why did he get caught? He has to be able to decipher that in his head. He has to be able to have the answer to that so it doesn't happen again. Way to block there. George Foreman blocks that punch. He got hit right there, but he also gave one. Solid effort by Lewis. Good way to protect the midsection. Teddy, early on in the career of Lennox Lewis, a lot of the British fans actually didn't gravitate towards him because he was one of these nomadic kind of fighters. You know, Jamaican, lived in Britain, but won a gold for Canada. Yeah, but the most important part of that geography is his own. He had his own identity. He knew where he stood. He knew where his confidence came from. He knew what his style was. Shot 
by George Foreman. Halfway through this round here. Good job protecting himself. The tactical game paying off. You can see the counter punch. Yeah, you see the counter punch, but you know what I see? I see a little tentativeness now in him because he's afraid to let anything go because when he misses, bang, he gets caught. Right back at him with a left hand. <laughs> Parries that punch intended for the head. Fine fundamentals, good counter punch. Stride for stride, punch for punch. Tough fight to score here as we're back underway. You're taking too many punches. Hands up. One, one. Keeping his hands up, getting way of his opponent's effort. Beat him to the punch. Good block by George. From that headshot with the block. Well, this is exactly where Lennox Lewis wants to be, just doing a really nice job on the outside. Boy, he's really working well on the outside, isn't he? Yeah, he's doing a great job of disciplining himself. You know, we talk about power, we talk about speed, we talk about all those virtues, but just controlling himself and making sure he controls the distance, a distance that's got him winning the fight. Teddy, when he won the gold medal in the Seoul Olympics in 88, he toppled Riddick Bowe. And it showed him right there, in the amateurs, what kind of level he could get to, what kind of fighters he could beat. And that confidence is serving him now. I would assume there has to come a point in this fight where he has to make the commitment to throw the power punches. It's hard to envision a way he's going to win this fight without going down that road. He doesn't have the confidence to do it. I don't know if he's mentally strong enough to do it. I think he's worried about throwing hard at the guy because maybe in his mind that means the guy will throw hard back at him. This is great stuff. I mean, great stuff. Bringing it every which way they are. So you remember the time you were on a vacation, you saw that perfect sunset? Oh, yeah. It was just beautiful. This is beautiful.
seconds to go in the fourth. Well, this round comes to an end. Joe and Teddy with your ring set. Uh, this is one of those fights, Teddy. It just feels like to me where it's going to be tough to really score. I mean, it's been a close fight. Yeah, it's a hard fight to score because you have one guy maybe a little busier, but the other guy makes up for it because he's a little heavier, a little heavier with those blows. So it's a matter of maybe the taste of the judges, what they prefer. here at the start of this round, which is just part of what has been a very evenly fought fight. One of those fights that's going to be very hard to score. Don't stay in one spot. Circle. Finish with the hook. Oh, he just misses with that headshot. Teddy, you know what I'm so impressed by? Obviously, the pace of this fight is just ridiculous. But how hungry these guys are, how badly each guy wants it. Joe, this is the kind of fight that it has nothing to do about money. It has everything to do about legacy, how they're going to be remembered. One of the most famous calls in all of sports broadcasting is down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. Well, there's a reason down went Frazier. It was because of the big shots of George Foreman. That was one of the great calls, of course, by Howard Cosell. And it was not just a big shot. It was the right plant shot. See, that's where Foreman deserves a little credit for being more than just a hulking guy, a powerful guy. He picked the right punch, the uppercut, the perfect punch at that moment to land on... Right to the head and right to the canvas. Teddy, it's what's ahead that's the problem. Yeah, we're getting a peek right now into his heart, into his soul. Wow! Lewis's legs look shaky. He was hurt. All right, come on now. Come on, work it out. Work it out. See some punches here. You need to block. in a bad spot right now. On, He's been stunned. Oh, he just misses with that headshot. End of the round. So he scores the knockdown and now heads back to his corner. Teddy, do you ever have to calm a guy down after he scored a knockdown? That's a really great point because a lot of times... That can be the turning point, but not for your guy that scored the knockdown, for the other guy. Because sometimes when you score a knockdown, you start to think it's going to be an easy night. And you forget what you knew when you came in. That it wasn't going to be an easy night. You're going to have to bring all the tools out of the tool shed. And it's important to remember that. You need to move that body more. Nice one. Nice one. Keep it up. This guy's never felt to be Sixth round now underway. 
Let's see who can really come on here in the second half of this fight. Lewis is doing really well on the outside. Foreman's making some costly mistakes here. Number one among them is he's not moving his head at all. No, he's just stationary target right now. And now the only thing that he's lucky about is only one's coming at a time. But in a little while, his opponent, you know it, his opponent's going to start putting them together. Then he might not be here anymore. the headshot but he parries it away there's a taste of the sweet science you see the skill he has in counter punching and you know what he's doing is taking his opponent's jab away what a fight what a great great non-stop action fight this has been. Reaching the halfway point of round number six. Foreman dismisses that with a block. George Foreman's got a bad cut now that's opened up on his cheek. Good looking counter punch. Here's one for you now, he says. Right back with the left hand. hurt after that series of punches you know my old trainer used to tell me if you don't move your head the other guy will move it for you right now he's having his head moved by the other guy good block there by Lewis I don't know, Teddy, it just feels like one of those nights, one of those fights where somebody's getting hurt, where this is not going to the judges' scorecards. I feel like I'm in Coney Island watching one of those hot dog eating contests where somebody's going to try to eat 50 of them, 60 of them. In other words, he's not worried how he's going to feel at the end of the night. Let's, let's get on that floor. Back to fight action as a new round is underway. Of course, in that last round, it was fairly one-sided. He was hit pretty hard, and now he has to overcome that here. Yeah, you don't have to be Notre Dame to know that. I mean, everybody saw, you know, he got staggered, his knees buckled, did a little dance there. But what you have to really know now is know why you got hit and correct that immediately. to improve that accuracy missed with the headshot Foreman's reaching the point where if things don't change soon there's no way he could possibly win this fight clearly trailing every which way on the scorecards yeah, he's gonna have to land a big punch and you know you start to get into those desperate waters the more you look for a big punch the more it's not there and more importantly the more you leave yourself wide open <laughs> Lewis is, is doing very nicely on the outside here in this fight. Good looking counter punch. Mm. 
Threw the straight right hand, but didn't score with it. Now it's unbelievable. I mean, if you love roller coasters, you go to an amusement park. If you want to see left hooks, right hands, every direction, great chins, great endurance, great heart, you come. Wow! George Foreman stunned, and he is hurt. Come on now, guys. Keep busy. Come on. Taste of the sweet science, you see the skill he has in counter punching. And you know what he's doing? He's taking his opponent's jab away. <laughs> Lennox Lewis is in position right now to really bring home a good victory. He's up on the punch stats, he's up on your scorecard. This is his fight. Yeah, we just hope that the judges, and you never know that. That's one thing that sometimes can really disappoint you in this business. You hope the judges see it that way because I can't see it any other way. The round comes to its conclusion, and it's a round in which our man here, as he has back, was really tagged pretty solid. So if you're the trainer in the corner, what's your approach? Well, you know, that's a great question. My approach is that I have to remind him that he's on common ground. He's probably going to think he's in a place where he's never been before, but I'm going to remind him, hey, remember you got hurt in the gym? And then give him something to correct the problem. You know, tell him some technical things that he needs to hear. I want to see that head move more. Get the compress on, get the compress on, let this work. Another round, will it go in another one-way direction? It's been a one-sided fight so far tonight. <laughs> nice block. George Foreman's thinking defense first right now, Teddy. I mean, you can just see it in him. He's thinking strictly, hey, what happened earlier, I don't want that to happen again. And that's what his opponent wants him to think. So that's all you need to know, that you can't think that way, especially since that's not his style. Joe, if he was a counterpuncher, it'd be okay. You know, your defense creates offense when you're a counterpuncher. He is not that kind of fighter. He can't win this way. Well-targeted counterpunch by Lewis. Lennox Lewis, his opponent, is saying to himself, I can't believe this. Every time this guy throws, it seems like he lands. He's very judicious with his work. Yeah, and that's not by accident. You know, that's his temperament. And he has that kind of temperament. If you went out with the guy, you talk to the guy, you know, he thinks before he says things. He doesn't just, you know, let his mouth go. He doesn't just let his hands go. He lets them go when he thinks he should. strategy that works really well for him. 
He's staying outside, he's utilizing that jab, and he's scoring when he can. Yeah, he's recognizing the deficiencies of his opponent. He's got a slow, plodding guy in front of him who's a little flat-footed, and he's doing, as you said, exactly what he should be doing. Lennox Lewis's nose is starting to bleed. of the round here and as I glance around ringside and look at the judges I'm wondering what they're writing down because that was a tough round to score yeah it was and you know it's the kind of round where one guy would be really smart to take a page out of the book of Sugar Ray Leonard Marvin Hagler where Leonard stole rounds at the end where he just clipped off 30 seconds and that's exactly what the judges remembered Whenever he misses, come on. Get the compress on. As another round gets underway, it gets us thinking how much more of this will we see. It's hard to envision this fight going to distance with how lopsided it's been. Foreman dismisses that with a block. Must be the punch of the day. Both guys bringing home uppercuts. Well placed counter punch by Lewis. Now he's just walking him back a bit there up against the ropes. Staying away from those headshots with his defense up top. Wow, just sit back and enjoy this one. You can tell both guys are so determined to give everything they have here tonight. So it's like the first time you heard Ray Charles sing God Bless America. You knew it was special. You knew you hadn't heard it before. I haven't seen anything like this before. he has in counter punching and you know what he's doing is taking his opponent's jab away he has reached that point in the fight where his only chance is to cash in and hit lotto here he needs that grand slam that big knockout punch doesn't he yeah and he doesn't have a pen in his hand where he can fill out the numbers but he does have a couple fists and what he's gonna have to do is find a specific place to aim a shot look for one moment one spot Able to dismiss his opponent's shot and then comes back with an uppercut. <laughs> Fine fundamentals, good counter punch. Counter punch by Lewis. <laughs> this has been a hotly contested war throughout, and you just have a sense that it's going to end at any moment in these later rounds. Yeah, these guys are not saving anything, they're going for broke right from the beginning. Suck it up. You want to win? You got to dig what you never Just focus on the fight. We'll take care of this way. Get on that. Get on that. No turning back now. Tenth round is upon us. Last round of the fight.
Blocks away that headshot. <laughs> Unable to score with the uppercut that time. There it is! George Foreman's in bad shape! George Foreman blocks that punch. Turns over the hook after turning away his opponent's shot. Lennox Lewis has got to deal with a cut on his cheek right now. The good news is it's below the eye, but still, it could get nasty as the fight progresses. This is great stuff. I mean, great stuff. Bring it in every which way they are. So you remember the time you were on a vacation, you saw that perfect sunset? Oh, yes. It was just beautiful. This is beautiful. to go in what has been two minutes of sensational action. Neither man coming off stride. Carries that punch intended for the head. Wow! George Foreman's in a bad spot right, on, right now. Guys. He's get been out. stunned. No holding. This is gonna take some guts to get up from this. Once again, he goes down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And it's over. This fight is over. Lennox Lewis is going to be partying tonight. A knockout victory. Five knockouts. Your winner, Lennox Lewis. Lennox Lewis is your winner by impressive knockout victory. And he did it just the way he had to. Stayed on the outside and used those quick hands all night. Alongside Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time ringside.